In this video I'll be discussing the radiographic features of gout when it affects the bones and joints. The main problem with gout is high levels of uric acid within the body. This manifests as hyperuricemia, but also monosodium urate crystals can deposit uh, within joints, within the bone and in a periarticular position. Combined with precipitation of calcium, this causes the tophi, which is a collection of sodium urate, to become dense on a, an x-ray. If you put the crystals under polarised light, they become negatively birefringent, unlike calcium pyrophosphate, where they are positively birefringent. Approximately 50% of patients with gout will have bony changes on x-ray. And essentially gout is an asymmetrical polyarthropathy, affecting mainly the hands and the feet, and classically the big toe, but can, in theory, affect any joint. Here is an example of a patient with tophaceous gout. Here is the soft tissue tophus. There's increased density because of the deposition of uh, calcium and sodium urate together. And here is a, a juxta articular erosion, punched out and well defined. This schematic diagram illustrates what the normal joint looks like. Here's the joint capsule. Here's the margin of the joint. And a juxta articular erosion causes a mouse bite or a well defined punched out juxta articular erosion, which is nicely demonstrated here but also at the DIP joint also. Here is another patient with gout. Once again you see the soft tissue tophus and you can see juxta articular erosions in the periphery of the joint affecting the lateral and medial aspects of the joint margin. It's worth pausing this video and looking at the annotated image and the corresponding non-annotated image to see where the juxta articulate erosions are. Imagine what this patient would look like clinically if they put their hand on your desk. This is a typical appearance of tophaceous gout. Here is another patient with chronic tophaceous gout got overhanging edges, marked juxta articular erosion, there's a, a juxta articular erosion here and here also, and around the PIP joint and the DIP joint with marked soft tissue tophus, which again is denser than the surrounding tissues because of the calcium deposition. It's important to state that in gout, you do not get osteopenia until very late on in the disease. And the same is true of joint space narrowing. Don't forget, patients may have coexisting OA, as in this case, but it's not until very late on in the disease that you actually start losing joint space. There is a condition uh, called an intraosseous tophus. This patient has uh, an intraosseous uh, lytic lesion, it's causing destruction. But if you examine the joint very carefully, you can actually see the joint margin is intact, at least in this arc over here. Uh, a bit more medial, there is some destruction, and a bit more lateral, there is some destruction. But essentially the joint space is reasonably well preserved. And this is a pure intraosseous tophus. Note that there are uh, juxta articular erosions also, and there's a soft tissue tophus. If you would like any further reading, uh, in particular the use of MR and ultrasound, I can recommend this article, which is very good. And for a classical description of the plain film appearances of gout, I would go to this article here.